Hey Browns fans, time for another National Perspective interview presented by Socios.com. And today we're joined by ESPN NFL insider Field Yates. And Field, for the Browns 2020, magical. 2021, a lot of hype. Didn't live up to it, unfortunately. So what's your take? What's kind of the state of the Browns as you see it right now? I think there's got to be, this is a look in the mirror offseason and figure out whether 2020 or 2021 is more reflective of where you actually are. And when you have a look in the mirror offseason, that can include some honest conversations, some difficult decisions, uh, but you're close. Like, this is not a team that we are viewing as, you know, I know they're picking 13th in the draft, but that might be, a, like, that's lower than where I think if I were to rank the 32 franchises and their chances to be good next year, that's much lower than where I would have the Browns. So it's an interesting year for them. Uh, the vibes are different this year compared to where they were last year, but that's okay. Like, Part of that is because they set an expectation that hadn't been around for a long time. So I think they're a bounce back candidate. There's some critical decisions they have to make and certainly uh, a quarterback plan is chief amongst them. Yeah, I think everybody would agree that improving the passing game, whether that means better quarterback play from Baker Mayfield now that he's not injured, yeah. the receiving core probably is at the top of your list for Andrew Barry and Kevin Stefanski this offseason. Certainly would think so, and we know that uh, Jarvis Landry has already made, you know, made clear publicly that like, a decision is going to have to come one way or the other. Part of uh, when you have a roster that's got some really good young players and guys that have already been paid like Miles Garrett and Joel Batonio and Wyatt Teller and guys that are due to be played like a Denzel Ward as an example and after you've gone free agent shopping for guys like John Johnson in recent off seasons is that you've got to balance the roster and at some point you have to make some difficult decisions and they don't pay GMs to make the easy ones, they, make, they pay GMs to make the difficult ones. So I think the passing game is certainly one that has to come into focus this off season. Listen, everything that could go wrong for Baker Mayfield did go wrong this past year. I also know that after the playoff loss to Kansas City two seasons ago, um, the vibe was, you know, the, the feeling was much different. It was that Baker was scratching the surface and that he was coming, you know, into a big, huge, potentially franchise-altering contract at some point and is going to be the guy that's going to be the answer for a long time. Um, I think some of us on Baker right now is to figure out what kind of player he wants to be going forward. Uh, there's plenty of scale. There's plenty of leadership. But uh, this past year was difficult for a lot of reasons, I imagine. And I think this is an opportunity for him to kind of recalibrate and reset. Uh, because if, if he gets back on track, like, this team is that close. And uh, there are other holes as well. You mentioned the wide receiver spot. It seems like a good draft to be looking for a wide receiver. Uh, so they should be able to find some players there. Um, they're, not, they're not that far. And I know it feels disappointing after this past year. But even like by midseason, we still thought this was a team that like they're going to be a tough out, right? There were a couple games where it wasn't as competitive, but there were some games that they were either losing close or they're winning. And you're like, all right, they took care of business against some quality teams. This team can be really good. When you think about the AFC and you think about Joe Burrow now yeah. and the Bengals, they go to the Super Bowl in your division and Josh Allen and Herbert and, of course, Patrick Mahomes yeah. and Lamar Jackson's MVP also in your division. The AFC is setting up to be very, very tough. When you're from the Browns standpoint, you got your defense where you wanted to. So the focus on offense and, and really kind of the evolution of that passing game, as you said. I think so. And uh, I don't know, and I, I'm trying not to be a prisoner of the moment when I say this, but it feels as competitive of a conference we've had in a long time. Yeah. Like it's, it's truly like it's, it, and who knows, maybe someone will emerge as like the dominant team. Um, but, you know, the Patriots made the Super Bowl nine times in 19 seasons. 20 seasons. I don't think that's where this conference headed. I think this is going to be like we're all passing the cup around. You know, you get a run and then you get a run and you get a run and you get a run and um, it's really compelling because you mentioned all the young stars. There are some other players that are going to be around for a while too that are really good uh, as, as things presently stand, whether it's a guy like Derek Carr as an example. He's a good player, very, very solid player for the Raiders and others that are you know, we'll see. We'll see where Tua Tagovailoa emerges to. You know, Mac Jones was nearly the rookie of the year this year. Like, there's a really, really deep quarterback group right now in the AFC. So I do think that um, it's going to be a, a conference where uh, you got to be able to keep up, and I mean that scoring a lot of points. There's no doubt. And when you think about, you know, Kevin Stefanski two yeah. years ago, Coach of the Year. Yeah. And the offense he was able to put in, and Andrew Barry said, I think very successful off seasons in attacking what he wanted to do. Would you tell Browns fans at least take some comfort in the fact that you've got that leadership and continuity for the first time? No doubt. And when I say this, it's going to come across as like it's the players' fault, which is not the case. I think everybody is has to absorb some of the burden of what happened last year. But like, 
I think the world of Andrew Barry as a general manager, I think he's got not just good football valuation skills, he's got a good front office with him, he's got good understanding of the league, he's got, I think, good interpersonal skills, I think he's got a good ability to thread the needle between being the person responsible for finding players and also finding their replacements, but also being sure. compassionate and understanding how the business side of it works. I think Kevin Spansky is an absolute He's a brilliant offensive mind. I really believe that. Like, he's orchestrated some really good offenses. He helped them in a major way. Two seasons ago, we talked about it. Like, leadership is good. Um, I think that last year, and I'm not trying to make excuses because everybody deals with them, but, like, almost everything that could go wrong last year did go wrong. Um, you almost feel like the Browns would be due for just sort of an, a correction of the market next year. Well, we certainly will take that field. Thank you so much for the time. Thanks for having me on. It was good to catch up with you. All right, that's our national perspective presented by Socios.com.